Hello friends, welcome to this YouTube channel. Today we are going to solve a couple of numerical problems on single phase AC parallel circuits. By solving these problems, we shall learn how to determine branch currents and total current taken from the supply for a three branch parallel circuit. We shall also learn how to compute overall power factor, total active power, and reactive power for such electrical circuits. When three impedances Z1, Z2 and Z3 are connected across a common single phase AC power source, they form a three branch parallel circuit. Now current flowing through the first branch I1 equals to V divided by Z1 where V is the supply voltage and Z1 is the impedance of the first branch. I1 may be written as V into Y1, where Y1 is the admittance of the first branch. Y1 equals to 1 upon Z1. Similarly, current flowing through the second branch, I2 equals to V divided by Z2 where Z2 is the impedance of the second branch. I2 may be written as V into Y2, where Y2 is the admittance of the second branch. Y2 equals to 1 upon Z2. And current flowing through the third branch, I3 equals to V divided by Z3, where Z3 is the impedance of the third branch. I3 may be written as V into Y3, where Y3 equals to 1 upon Z3 is the admittance of the third branch. Applying Kirchhoff's current law at node P, we obtain total current supplied by the source I equals to I1 plus I2 plus I3. This may be expressed as V into Y1 plus Y2 plus Y3 that is equal to V into YEQ where YEQ is the equivalent admittance of this entire circuit. Consumed power in the first branch P1 equals to I1 square into R1 where R1 is the resistance of the first branch. Consumed power in the second branch, P2 equals to I2 square into R2, where R2 is the resistance of the second branch. And consumed power in the third branch, P3 equals to I3 square into R3, where R3 is the resistance of the third branch. Total power consumed by the circuit P equals to P1 plus P2 plus P3. Total current supplied by the source may be expressed in polar form as I equals to I at an angle 5, where I is the magnitude of current and phi is the phase angle between supply voltage and total current. Now P may be expressed as Vi cos phi, where cos phi is the circuit power factor. And total reactive power, Q equals to Vi sin phi. Reactive power of the first branch, Q1 equals to I1 square into X1, where X1 is the reactance of the first branch. Reactive power of the second branch, Q2 equals to I2 square into X2, where X2 is the reactance of the second branch. And reactive power of the third branch, Q3 equals to I3 square into X3, where X3 is the reactance of the third branch. Total reactive power may be determined by taking algebraic sum of these three reactive powers. For this purpose, capacitive reactive power should be considered as negative 
whereas inductive reactive power should be taken as positive. For the circuit shown in figure, we have to determine the current and power consumed in each branch, the supply current and power factor and the total power consumed by the circuit. Let us first write down the given data. Supply voltage V equals to 100 volts at an angle 45 degree. For the first branch, given resistance RC equals to 5 ohm and capacitive reactance XC equals to 5 root 3 ohm. Let us now calculate complex impedance of the first branch. Z1 equals to RC minus JXC that is equal to 5 minus J, 5 root 3 ohm. This may be written in polar form as 10 ohm at an angle minus 60 degree. Now we shall calculate current flowing through the first branch. I1 equals to V divided by J1 using values we get 100 at an angle 45 degree divided by 10 at an angle minus 60 degree. That gives us 10 ampere at an angle 105 degree. Power consumed in the first branch P1 equals to I1 square into RC. Using values we get 10 square into 5 that is equal to 500 watts. For the second branch, given resistance RL equals to 5 ohm and inductive reactance XL equals to 5 root 3 ohm. Let us now calculate complex impedance of the second branch. Z2 equals to RL plus JXL that is equal to 5 plus J5 root 3 ohm. This may be written in polar form as 10 ohm at an angle 60 degree. Now we shall calculate current flowing through the second branch. I2 equals to V divided by J2. Using values we get 100 at an angle 45 degree divided by 10 at an angle 60 degree. That gives us 10 ampere at an angle minus 15 degree. Now we shall determine power consumed in the second branch. P2 equals to I2 square into RL. Using values we get 10 square into 5 that is equal to 500 watts. For the third branch. Given resistance R equals to 10 ohm. Let us now calculate current flowing through the third branch. I3 equals to V divided by R. Using values we get 100 at an angle 45 degree divided by 10. That is equal to 10 ampere at an angle 45 degree. This may be written in Cartesian form as 7.071 plus J, 7.071 Ampere. Now we shall determine power consumed in the third branch. P3 equals to I3 square into R. Using values we get 10 square into 10 that is equal to 1000 watts. We have already determined current flowing through the first branch. I1 equals to 10 ampere at an angle 105 degree. This may be written in Cartesian form as minus 2.588 plus J 9.659 ampere. And current flowing through the second branch. I2 equals to 10 ampere at an angle minus 15 degree. This may be written in Cartesian form as 9.659 plus J 
minus J 2.588 ampere. Applying Kirchhoff's current law at node P, we get total current taken from the supply I equals to I1 plus I2 plus I3. Using values we get 14.142 plus J 14.142 ampere. This may be written in polar form as 20 ampere at an angle 45 degree. Now the phase angle between supply voltage and current phi equals to 45 degree minus 45 degree that is equal to 0 degree. Let us now calculate overall power factor cos phi equals to cos of 0 degree that is equal to 1. Now we shall determine total power consumed by the circuit. P equals to Vi cos phi. Using values we get 100 into 20 into 1. That is equal to 2000 watts. We have obtained total current taken from the supply. I equals to 20 ampere at an angle 45 degree. Let us now determine Equivalent impedance of this circuit. JDQ equals to V divided by I. Using values we get 100 at an angle 45 degree divided by 20 at an angle 45 degree. That gives us 5 ohm at an angle 0 degree. This may be written in Cartesian form as 5 plus J0 ohm. Therefore, this entire circuit can be replaced by a single register whose equivalent resistance REQ equals to real part of JDQ that is equal to 5 ohm. For the circuit shown in figure, we have to calculate the current in each branch, the total current taken, the total power consumed by the circuit, the reactive power consumed or generated and power factor of the circuit. Let us first write down the given data. Supply voltage V equals to 110 volts. Supply frequency F equals to 50 hertz. For the first branch, given resistance RL equals to 6 ohm. And inductance L equals to 0 0.01 Henry. Let us now calculate inductive reactance. XL equals to 2 pi F into L. Using values we get 2 pi into 50 into 0 0.01. That gives us 3.1416 ohm. Now we shall write down. The complex impedance of the first branch, Z1 equals to RL plus JXL, that is equal to 6 plus J, 3.1416 ohm. This may be written in polar form as 6.7727 ohm at an angle 27.6366 degree. For the second branch, Given resistance RC equals to 12 ohm and capacitance of the capacitor C equals to 200 microfarad. That is equal to 200 into 10 to the power minus 6 farad. Let us now determine capacitive reactance. Xc equals to 1 upon 2 pi F into C. Using values we get. 1 upon 2 pi into 50 into 200 into 10 to the power minus 6. That is equal to 15.9155 ohm. Now we shall calculate complex impedance of the second branch. J2 equals to RC minus JXC. That is equal to 12 minus J. 15.9155 ohm. This may be written in polar form as 
19.9325 ohm at an angle minus 52.9844 degree. For the third branch, given resistance R equals to 22 ohm, let us now write down complex impedance for the third branch. Z3 equals to R plus J0 that is equal to 22 plus J0 ohm. This may be written in polar form as 22 ohm at an angle 0 degree. We have computed impedance of the first branch. Z1 equals to 6.7727 ohm at an angle 27.6366 degree. And impedance of the second branch, Z2 equals to 19.9325 ohm at an angle minus 52.9844 degree. Let us now calculate current flowing through the first branch. I1 equals to V divided by Z1. Taking supply voltage V as reference we get. I1 equals to 110 at an angle 0 degree divided by 6.7727 at an angle 27.6366 degree. That gives us 16.2417 ampere at an angle minus 27.6366 degree. This may be written in Cartesian form as 14.3886. Minus J 7.5339 ampere. Now we shall calculate current flowing through the second branch. I2 equals to V divided by J2. Using values we get 110 at an angle 0 degree divided by 19.9325. At an angle minus 52.9844 degree. That gives us 5.5186 ampere. At an angle 52.9844 degree. This may be written in Cartesian form as 3.224 plus J 4.4065 ampere. Current flowing through the third branch. I3 equals to V divided by J3. Using values we get 110 at an angle 0 degree divided by 22 at an angle 0 degree. That is equal to 5 ampere at an angle 0 degree. This may be written in Cartesian form as 5 plus J0 ampere. Applying Kirchhoff's current law. At node P, we get total current taken from the supply I equals to I1 plus I2 plus I3. Using values, we get 22.711 minus J 3.1274 ampere. This may be written in polar form as 22.9253 ampere. At an angle minus 7.8405 degree. We have computed total current taken from the supply I equals to 22.9253 ampere at an angle minus 7.8405 degree. Now we shall calculate power factor of the circuit. Cos phi equals to cos of 7.8405 degree. That gives us 0 0.9907 lagging. Now we shall compute total power consumed by the circuit. P equals to Vi cos phi. Using values we get 110 into 22.9253 into 0.9907 that is equal to 2498.33 watt and reactive power QL equals to VI sine phi using values we get 110 into 22.9253 into sine of 7.8405 degree. 
that is equal to 344 volt ampere reactive which is lagging in nature. Let us now calculate equivalent impedance of this circuit. JDQ equals to V divided by I. Using values we get 110 at an angle 0 degree divided by 22.9253 at an angle minus 7.8405 degree. That is equal to 4.7982 ohm at an angle 7.8405 degree. This may be written in Cartesian form as 4.7533 plus J 0.6546 ohm. Therefore, this entire circuit may be replaced by a simple series RL circuit where equivalent resistance REQ equals to real part of JDQ that is equal to 4.7533 ohm and equivalent inductive reactance XEQ equals to imaginary part of JDQ that is equal to 0 0.6546 ohm. Let us now determine equivalent inductance. LEQ equals to XEQ divided by 2 pi F. Using values we get 0 0.6546 divided by 2 pi into 50. That gives us 0 0.0020835 Henry or 2.0835 milli Henry. A parallel circuit consists of three branches. Branch 1 comprises of an 8 ohm register in series with a 200 microfarad capacitor. Branch 2 consists of an inductor of 4 ohm resistance and 20 milli Henry inductance. And branch 3 is a 10 ohm register. These three branches are connected in parallel across a 100 volt 50 hertz power supply. We have to calculate the current in each branch and its phase relationship with the applied voltage, the total current taken from the supply, the overall power factor, the power consumed in each branch, and the total power consumed in the circuit. Let us first write down the given data. Supply voltage V equals to 100 volts. Supply frequency F equals to 50 Hz. For branch 1, given resistance RC equals to 8 ohm. And capacitance of the capacitor C equals to 200 microfarad. That is equal to 200 into 10 to the power minus 6 farad. Let us now calculate capacitive reactance. Xc equals to 1 upon 2 pi F into C. Using values we get. 1 upon 2 pi into 50 into 200 into 10 to the power minus 6. That is equal to 15.9155 ohm. Now we shall determine complex impedance of the first branch. Z1 equals to RC minus JXC. That is equal to 8 minus J 15.9155 ohm. This may be written in polar form as 17.813 ohm at an angle minus 63.3134 degree. Current flowing through the first branch. I1 equals to V divided by Z1. Taking supply voltage V as reference we get. I1 equals to 100 at an angle 0 degree divided by 17.8. 813 at an angle minus 63.3134 degree that is equal to 5.6139 ampere at an angle 63.3134 degree. Power consumed in the first branch P1 equals to I1 square into RC 
using values we get 5.6139 square into 8 that is equal to 252.127 watt. For the second branch, given resistance RL equals to 4 ohm and inductance L equals to 20 milli Henry that is equal to 20 into 10 to the power minus 3 Henry. Let us now determine inductive reactance XL equals to 2 pi F into L using values we get. 2 pi into 50 into 20 into 10 to the power minus 3. That is equal to 6.2832 ohm. Now we shall compute complex impedance of the second branch. Z2 equals to RL plus JXL. That is equal to 4 plus J. 6.2832 ohm. This may be written in polar form as 7.4484 ohm at an angle 57.5184 degree. Current flowing through the second branch I2 equals to V divided by J2 using values we get 100 at an angle 0 degree divided by 7.4484 at an angle 57.5184 degree. That gives us 13.4257 ampere at an angle minus 57.5184 degree. Now we shall determine power consumed in the second branch. P2 equals to I2 squared into RL. Using values we get 13.4257 squared into 4. That is equal to 721 watts. For the third branch, given resistance R equals to 10 ohm. Let us now calculate current flowing through the third branch. I3 equals to V divided by R. Using values we get 100 at an angle 0 degree divided by 10. That is equal to 10 ampere at an angle 0 degree. This may be written in Cartesian form as 10 plus J0 ampere. Now we shall determine power consumed in the third branch. P3 equals to I3 square into R. Using values we get 10 square into 10 that is equal to 1000 watts. We have already computed Current flowing through the first branch, I1 equals to 5.6139 ampere at an angle 63.3134 degree. This may be written in Cartesian form as 2.5212 plus J 5.0159 ampere. And current flowing through the second branch, I2 equals to 13.4257 ampere at an angle minus 57.5184 degree. This may be written in Cartesian form as 7.21 minus J 11.3255 ampere. Let us now apply Kirchhoff's current law at node P to obtain total current taken from the supply. I equals to I1 plus I2 plus I3. Using values we get 19.7313 minus J 6.3096 ampere. This may be written in polar form as 20.7155 ampere at an angle minus 17.7331 degree. Now let us draw the pressure diagram taking supply voltage V as reference. Current flowing through the first branch I1 leads supply voltage V by an angle 63.3134 degree. Current flowing through the second branch I2 lacks supply voltage V by an angle 57.5184 degree. 
current flowing through the third branch I3 is in phase with supply voltage V. Let us first determine phasor sum of I1 and I2 by taking phasor sum of this resultant phasor and I3. We obtain total current taken from the supply I which lacks supply voltage V by an angle 17.7331 degree. We have computed power consumed in the first branch. P1 equals to 252.127 watt. Power consumed in the second branch. P2 equals to 721 watt. And power consumed in the third branch. P3 equals to 1000 watt. Let us now calculate total power consumed in the circuit. P equals to P1 plus P2 plus P3. Using values we get 252.127 plus 721 plus 1000. That gives us 1973.127 Watt. We have determined Total current taken from the supply I equals to 20.7155 ampere at an angle minus 17.7331 degree. Now we shall determine overall power factor. Cos phi equals to cos of 17.7331 degree that gives us 0.9525 Lagging. We have computed total current taken from the supply I equals to 20.7155 ampere at an angle minus 17.7331 degree. Let us now determine equivalent impedance of this entire circuit. JDQ equals to V divided by I. Using values we get 100 at an angle 0 degree divided by 20.7155 at an angle minus 17.7331 degree. That gives us 4.8273 ohm at an angle 17.7331 degree. This may be written in Cartesian form as 4.5979 plus J 1.4703 ohm. Therefore, this entire circuit may be replaced by a simple series RL circuit where equivalent resistance REQ equals to real part of JDQ that is equal to 4.5979 ohm and equivalent inductive reactance XEQ equals to imaginary part of JDQ that is equal to 1.4703 ohm. Let us now determine equivalent inductance. LEQ equals to XEQ divided by 2 pi F. Using values we get 1.4703 divided by 2 pi into 50 that gives us 0.00. .00 468 Henry or 4.68 milli Henry. So today we have solved a couple of numerical problems on single phase AC parallel circuits. By solving these problems we have learned how to determine branch currents and total current taken from the supply for a three branch parallel circuit. We have also learned how to compute overall power factor, total active power and reactive power for such electrical circuits. Hope this lecture has been useful for you. If you have any suggestion or question, please drop it in the comment section below. If you have liked this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thank you.